Hi there, welcome to Dev Explaining. Uh, today I'll do a very quick video. This is simply about setting up Spring Boot uh, REST web service uh, so that uh, I have something to test in my uh, upcoming episodes. Uh, this is ver very simple, it's basically read the manual, but in case you have like five to ten minutes of time, uh, you can join me and, and just uh, observe how, how, how I like to set things up. Uh, once I have a working Spring Boot application base, what I can do is then um, start playing with those services. I actually have some ideas in mind where I could take this. Um, and additionally, I have one more episode coming up on testing the REST APIs. So this is an easy way to get some REST APIs to test. Let's get started. So uh, there's uh, several ways to start with uh, Spring Boot, but uh, in this case I'm using Spring Initializer. Uh, link is in the description of the video. Um, initializer is a, a rather kind of fast uh, way to get started. So you first select uh, what kind of uh, dependency management and build and packaging system you want to use. Many people like Gradle a lot, but I'm, I'm old school, so I'll, I'll go with the default Maven. We can choose a language, Java, Kotlin, Groovy, available. Uh, pretty good choices. But uh, I think I'll still go with Java for now. Um, then we get Spring Boot version. I'm going with the latest non kind of snapshot or milestone version. So that would be 2.4.4 right now. Uh, then we kind of uh, fill in some details for the application. This is typically the dif most difficult part to come up with. But I'm going to figure out the group name. This would be typically your company or your, your kind of a domain or whatever you like. It doesn't really need to be anything fancy. You can put anything here. Artifact is the name of your application. So in this case, let, let's see what we are going to do. This is, uh, for me, this is eventually going to be um, test data maker. Well, let's call it what would be a good name for that. Well, you can, you can vote uh, because uh, in the upcoming episodes I will probably do this again. So if you come up with better name, uh, add it in the comment section. But I'm going with Test Data Maker for now. That's my kind of plan for where this is heading. Uh, description, yeah, I'll, I can start with, well, um, creates GDPR free test data. Okay. Package name uh, follows what you just filled in. And then finally, some interesting choices. So packaging jar or war. War is kind of uh, old fashioned uh, and you use it if you want to deploy on an application server. Uh, again, I'm going with the defaults. Jar is uh, everything is inside that jar. So there's all the libraries included. You just need Java and you run that jar and then you have a web application and REST APIs going. And uh, then we have the uh, Java version and I'm very happy to see they have 16 here because I just happened to install 16 earlier So why not go with that uh, for this case? Um, and then dependencies well spring boot uh, contains a lot of different uh, Kind of add-ons you can choose to choose to apply there. So we have for example uh, Spring web which might actually be the one we like to have now uh, that includes the restful parts, so it's it's a nice base. I very very often choose that one. Then we could add other dependencies. By the way, I'm going to do another episode on Spring Native. It looks awesome. I I don't know it yet myself, but I will figure it out and do a video on that. Uh, Dev Dev tools are pretty cool. They enable you a little bit better developer ex experience. I'm going to steer away from that right now. Let's see other cool stuff here. Um, for databases, uh, which we are going to add at some point, we could immediately add uh, like REST repositories, or we could go, I think, downwards. We have some database choices. We also have very popular Spring Security. I was just discussing that in Reddit the other day. So um, Spring is highly modular and you can choose a lot of things, but I'm going to keep it very simple for a few next episodes. You can always manually add these dependencies later unless you already know what you are going to create. So I'll leave it pretty much with the defaults. I just filled in some details. So let's recap my choices. Maven style project, Java language, um, latest non-experimental version of Spring Boot. Then we have um, a jar packaging, Java 16 and one dependency. 
that would be spring web um, now i'm able to generate and it gives me a zip file so i'm simply going to download the zip zip file for now so it was test data maker zip and i'm copying it here and then i unzip that one in my code folder and it has that nice maven like folder structure already contained so let's go to test data maker folder clear it yeah so we have very minimal maven project here uh, step one was to create it with uh, with uh, spring uh, uh, initializer awesome little project there step two was to copy the zip and extract it so i have this folder step three why don't we take a quick look here so i'm going to open my java editor let's jump there my id so key parts of what i just created pom xml you cannot do spring without xml even today well you actually can but topic for another uh, for for another video probably but uh, this is pretty minimal maven pom as far as they go and uh, we have a nice little little setup here not much going on but we, all, all the choices we made are already set up here nicely we have that one dependency here already so we have starter web and starter test for testing uh, ready ready to go pretty much then uh, what else we have well we have uh, in source folder we have like a template for my application so there's very minimal tiny application base we have the main that kind of kickstarts the spring boot so very simple base and then uh, after we run it uh, yeah after we run it there's not much anything to observe at that point but we can easily now start creating restful web services on top of this then we have some resources here so resources cont contain places to put extra configuration and html files or, or any static files but i think let's cover those a little bit later so as you can see extremely minimal not much to see here um, let's let's try to run it so maven i i installed maven earlier we could do some of this in the in the ide but i feel like uh command line today so uh maven has um, a few lifecycle steps that you can do let's see yeah it took a little bit to think about there so uh, there there's a few choices you can see lifecycle phases here so there's compile for compiling your code then we have test for compiling and testing your code and finally we have package uh, for packaging your code and spring boot adds a little bit more let's let's do package that includes everything and see how our empty template project uh, works here okay so we went through the compilation phase testing phase there's a little bit of spring integration going on and we got a little bit of uh, the, those plugins downloaded from uh, maven central repository as well you need uh, internet access for the first run of this at least to get all those dependencies so packaging seem seem to go fine like any uh, Ma maven project now i have in the target folder i have my little little snapshot there okay so uh, what else can we do well we could run that snapshot uh, jar file but there's another way also to test this so just uh, pointing it out so we can do maven spring boot run so spring boot adds these little maven uh, life cycles that allow you to also start the application and test it immediately without any deployments and uh, as you can see what we have here mm, we have a little bit little server that just booted up uh, let's see tomcat started on port 8080 so we have a web server on localhost on this port running and uh, then it started successfully didn't take too much time things are rather fast in java land these days and yeah i think that's pretty much it we don't have much to see there yet but as you can see i managed to do uh, within 10 minutes of time I managed to grab the empty template, uh, drop it in my Java 16 environment and start it just to make sure everything works so far. Okay. Control C will shut it down, so I'm going to do that next. So, I, I promise to take this as far as uh, showing you a, rest, a restful web service. We have a few minutes 
still left so let's uh, try to see what we can whip up really fast um, as you see this is mostly an exercise in copy paste but this is something i can then build on i've seen people have a lot of questions already on these first few steps so it might be helpful to see somebody just whip past these and show that it's possible uh, and what parts uh, can you skip so uh, let's go back to the spring uh, website i have another link i'm going to include in the descriptions uh, the spring uh, website is awesome there's a lot of guides for how to how to deal with spring boot and uh, some of these might be a little bit heavy so for example there is some uh, building a restful web service tutorials that you might end up with and uh, they they will be including database and all, all that stuff uh, in there so i'm not going to do that let's keep it to the minimum uh, there is building a restful web service uh, example and uh, it's very minimal so i'm going to choose that one just whip through that very rapidly and uh, then as i said we can build on top of this you will find this link also in in the description of this video so so let's go back to the browser or ac actually let's grab something from here so what will you need a little bit of checkout about 15 minutes yeah kind of i'm talking too much so this is a bit more possibly but uh, it's uh, kind of close and then you need your favorite editor you need some J java version i'm running 16 you need maven installed i've shown it in my previous episodes and uh, how, how to do that sdk man is the answer that's a good answer there and uh, and and yeah um, here is a mention that you can also just clone this base but we started with spring initializer so we are here and then what we are able to next do well uh, we need a class to represent the resources we could do without uh, and modify this a bit but sure why not we can do this one as well so uh, i'm going to copy this uh, class called greeting and i'm going to go to my uh, ide and let's do an another greeting java file here yeah and uh, i'll do a slight modification so the example is having a a different package i just replace that package with the one that i'm using it's pretty much the only change i need here my id is liking this file now so otherwise it was quite okay i just replaced the package with the package that i happen to have here and then uh, next instruction is to create the resource controller so it's basically a rest resource endpoint uh, a rather fast to do as well so i'm going to copy this one and let's create that here we are probably going to do some something more fun later. Ah, okay, I, I skipped one point. I forgot to do this create a Java file. But uh, no worries, uh, I can rename it and uh, it's going to otherwise be fine. But just one little fix here as well. So I'm going to fix the package to correspond with what I'm using right now based on my initializer. Okay, so we have the greeting class uh, and then we have greeting controller that's a rest resource uh, we have a mapping uh, it's mapped to endpoint called greeting and then we have a little bit of a really funny logic it's not doing much but it's a kind of a placeholder so now we can actually go back to my uh, console you could run this in id you could build the jar and run it but as i demonstrated you can easily also do the spring boot run and not worry about any any jar files jar file is for deployment okay well uh yeah i uh, named my file wrongly so let's fix that as well id didn't catch that but uh greeting control actually it did i i see there's a red line below here now it's fixed i just didn't notice it i should change my theme for my vs code so let's go back to the console it's good to make a little mistakes now now and then to keep this real so uh, I think I should have the hello world kind of codes in my project. Uh, I started my server and I'm getting that feedback that it's running in 8080. So again, let's swap to my browser here. Let's try to go to localhost 8080. Okay, nothing here. But if we then go to a greeting and then we get a greeting, I'm almost surprised it worked immediately. So we are actually getting a JSON file from there. 
and there's this ID and a greeting and uh, log logic is saying that increase this every time I refresh it. And this is an example of transient state, meaning that if I shut down my uh, server, this is going to reset back to one. It's not persistent. It's not going to be saved to files or databases. So I think this covers it uh, for this very, very quick Hello World level run through of Spring Boot. I didn't dev explain too much, but I just showed you the very basics how to get through this. If you want to follow up on my some upcoming tutorials or are, are just starting with Spring Boot. Uh, internet is full of tutorials like this, similar things. Only difference is that they were not made by me. I hope this was clear enough for you to follow. I tried to keep it very simple and show you all the steps that I did as well. So if you do the same steps, you should get to the same results. That's the process. Uh, stay tuned for the upcoming videos. And as always, if you like this, click those buttons, share the link, uh, leave some feedback. I always appreciate that. Otherwise, see you later. Bye bye.